Welcome back grade 8. As promised yesterday, we are going to look at alternative methods to create a number pattern. We are going to look at the sequence 2, 7, 17 and 37. This, that is only 4 terms of the sequence and we would like to calculate 5 and 6 and the rest of this sequence. First of all, we look at the the methods that we already know about like the constant difference or the constant relation so if i look between 2 and 7 the difference is plus 5 if i look at 17 and 7 the difference is plus 10 from 17 to 37 it's plus 20 so that means there's no constant difference that i can spot immediately if I used the, uh, the formula I used yesterday, T2 minus T1, that's where I got the 5. And then T3 minus T2, 17 minus 7 is 10. T4 minus T3 is 37 minus 7 is 20. So there's no constant difference. If we look at constant relations, then we will also see that there's no constant relation. If I divide T2 by T1, which is 7 divided by 2, I get 3.5. T3 divided by T2 is 17 divided by 7, which is 2 and 3 sevenths, which is also not constant to this one. And T4 divided by T3 gives you 2 and 3 over 17. So we can see that there's no constant relation. We would need to get an alternative way to calculate the difference. Okay, let's look at the sequence. Okay, we already got the difference previously. The difference between 2 and 7 is if I add 5. If I add 10 here, I get 17 and if I add 20 here I get 37 now this is not constant and I need something constant to start with so if I use this now as a number sequence or a number pattern if I look between 5 and 10 from to get from 5 to 10 is times 2 and to get from 10 to 20 is also times 2. So there is my constant. So now I can start. I can say to get from 2 to 7, I can at least multiply by 2. And the same from 7 to 17, and the same from 17 to 37. So if I take 2 and I times it by 2, I get 4. But I want 7, so I can add another 3. So I can multiply by 2 and add 3, and then I will get my next term. So this term 1 times 2 plus 3 will give me 7. Now if I start with 7 and I multiply with 2, the constant it gives me 14 and if I want to get to 17 I add a 3 and that will give me the 17 so this is term 2 now from multiply by 2 add 3 and that will give you term 3 this was term 2 so this will be term 3 and we can continue like this so now we know if I take a term, say in this case term 4, and I multiply it with 2 and I add 3, that will give me the term 5 that I am looking for. Term 4 is 37. If I times it by 2, it's and add 3, I will get my next term, which is 77. 37 times 2 
is 74, 75, 6, 7. So this will be 77. And then if I take term 5 and I multiply it with 2 and I add 3, I will get 157. 77 times 2 is 154 plus 3 is 157. So by taking your row and going a bit further down, try and get a constant difference. If you don't get a difference, use that as a new row and see if there's not a relation between the two. Either a constant difference or a constant relation. There's a relation in this case of 2 times 2 times 2. If I add this 77 here, my difference here will be 40. Between 20 and 40, it's times 2. So you will see that the, the rule will continue throughout the sequence, throughout this pattern. And that is how we got an alternative method to calculate this pattern. I write it out, the rule like this. Um, T2 is the same, uh, is equal to T1 times 2 plus 3, which gives you 7. Then term 3 is term 2, which is 7, times 2 plus 3 is 17. Term 4 is term 3 times 2 plus 3, which is 37. And then if I want to calculate the rest of my of my row, that is 77 and 157. It will then be 37 times 2 plus 3, which gives you 77, times 2 plus 3, that will give you 157. So if we look a bit further, then this alternative method can assist you to predict the rest of the row. We have to practice this. So um, there's your practice exercise, number one and number two. Um, find each of the following rows and then you have to give the rule. You have to write down the rule and the next three terms. And then for that specific row, number two, you have to answer all those questions. And then I will see you tomorrow again. Enjoy your day.